Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Renogy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So I think they have two 2000 watt inverters. This is a 12 volt inverter. And this is the higher end model that has the power saving mode. So let's get this open here. So here we have the cable, user manual, said probably be accessories and the inverter itself. So I'm going to get this off my bench and I'll pull it up. So here we have the inverter itself. So this is going to be going in my 2021 KZ Escape E17 hatch. And I've done a number of videos on that, upgrading the electrical system. And I'll put a link below to my playlist where you can find those. So here we have a warranty card. And this is the remote switch. So it has an RJ11 jack on the back. So inverters can take a lot of power, so it's good to turn them off when you're not using them. So a remote switch like this allows you to mount this switch in a separate location from your inverter so you can turn it on and off more conveniently. So it comes with the RJ11 cable here and some mounting screws. So this does come with some cables. So these are doubled up cables. So they're dual four gauge cables. And from what I've read online, that would equate to about the same as a one gauge cable. You take the individual cable and go down three. So it's four, and if you double it up, it goes to one. So, and I think that's approximate. I'm not an electrical engineer, so I don't know how accurate that is. Now, I don't know if I'm going to use these cables. I do have some one-aught cable. I may use that instead. But you definitely need to make sure your cable is sized right to power an inverter like this. Let's take a quick look at the manual. So it comes with a sticker in here and another warranty card. So this is the PGH1-200111S. So they make 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 watt models of this. So this is going to go over the installation instructions. I'm not going to cover all of this. So you want to read through it on your own. And they do call this the Renogy PGH1 series inverter. So I think that differentiates it between the older version that doesn't have the power saving features. So this is a pure sine wave inverter. So this should be able to run most things, including motors, computers, things like that. This talks about the remote, which we have. Then it shows as an optional component, a monitoring screen. So I'll be using the Renji One Core to monitor this. This shows the different parts on the side. So we have some different indicator LEDs. We have dip switches to configure it. it has an on off and remote switch. So you can turn it on so it's on all the time. You can turn it off or you can turn it to remote and then it will be triggered by that remote switch. It has the RS485 communication port. So that's for connecting the BT2 module. It has two AC outlets. It says utilize up to 8.3 amps, 1000 watts or up to 15 amps in the 2000, 3000 watt models, which is what this is. And then it has some terminal blocks so you can hardwire it in. Here's the other side where we have the negative and positive 12 volt input, and we have two fans. And we also have a grounding lug. So this talks about sizing batteries, grounding. You'll want to read through and make sure this is all set up properly. Our DC wiring. This talks about wiring in series and parallel. This is a 12 volt system. So you could have two 12 volt batteries in parallel, or you could have two six volts in series. This talks about connecting the terminals. They recommend this is connected to a GFCI outlet. This talks about fusing. So this is a 2000 watt inverter. So they recommend a 200 amp fuse and minimum two gauge wire. So as I said earlier, the doubled up four gauge wire is around one gauge and the numbers get bigger as they go down. So the one gauge is a little bit higher than they recommend here as a minimum. So if I go with one aught cable, that's even lower. One aught is just zero cable. So that can easily handle this. Now, for example, if you have a 3000 watt inverter, they recommend four aught cable. So that's really thick cable. So this talks about using the AC, setting up the wired remote. This talks about the dip switches. So with the dip switches, you can turn the eco mode on and off and you can change the frequency from 50 to 60 Hertz. We have some troubleshooting and these are the technical specs. So you can pause and read through those. And we are in the middle here for the 2000 watt inverter. Then we have some dimensions on the back, maintenance, cleaning, things like that. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the inverter. So we have an aluminum case here, and it looks like aluminum on the end, different color. So here we have the cover for the AC lugs. We have the two outlets. We have the common remote ports, and we have the, I think they call those dip switches, but they're little switches for 50, 60 Hertz and eco and normal mode. Then this is the on switch. So we have on, off, and remote. This side is where we connect up our terminals. So it has these little covers that go over here to protect the terminals. So you're going to bolt them on here and put the covers on to protect them. Then we have two fans here also. Now to mount this, we have these keyhole slots here, and then we have these other mounting holes 
So it has a couple of different ways you can mount this. And you'll have to read through the manual. It talks about which orientations they want you to mount this in. I know there are some orientations they don't want you to. I think they said on this, they don't want it upside down. So I just wanted to go over this on my bench where we could look at things in detail. Now, I'm not going to cover every aspect of the install, but I am going to go over what I did and how I have it set up. So I'll cut to the next clip now. Okay, so I'm out here at my camper. And this is under the bed at the front of my camper. And I have my batteries here and some bus bars. On the back side of that, I have my solar charge controller. And I was playing with putting the inverter back here, but it was going to be tighter than I was comfortable with. So I actually decided to put it back here. And this may seem like it's not very accessible. And in a way it is kind of out of the way, but it does have lots of airflow around here. We have the water tank nearby and this is cold water. So this could absorb some of the heat from this but otherwise it's really open around it. It's a little tricky to get back here to install it, but I put two screws up here in the top. So I can use the keyhole slots in the inverter to slide it on there. And then I'm going to put one screw in on this end to keep it from sliding back. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I did pre-drill these holes. It was a little tricky because I don't want to drill anything on the other side, but to get down here for clearance, I just loosened this up and pulled it out of the way, drilled the hole and screwed it back in. So let me show what it looks like here. Okay, so this is what it looks like installed. So you can see the screws are on the keyhole slots here. So to wire this up, I'm going to run the positive somehow to the other side. I'll run the ground through this hole here and I'll hook it up to my positive and negative terminal buses. You can also run the ground here to the negative terminal bus. Now on the other side, I have the outlet. So this came pre-wired for an inverter. So we have the Romex coming out of the camper and that goes into this box here. Well, that's not focusing. And that goes to a regular 120 volt cord. It's like an extension cord or an appliance cord. So I don't know that that will reach. It might if I rearrange it, but otherwise I can splice into the Romex and hardwire it into this inverter. So the downside of this is that I won't be able to easily reach the switches on the other side. Now I shouldn't have to switch it between say 50 and 60 Hertz very often. And then as far as like eco mode, I may want to switch it every once in a while. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of that and laminate it and somewhere maybe off the end here, I'm going to have some diagrams for my wiring and such, and I'll include that picture. So if a person needed to switch something on there, I have put this hatch in the bed. So you could pull that hatch out, reach your arm in there, and feel for the right switch and switch it, being guided by that picture. Now the limiting factors as far as putting this on here is I have the one op cable. I wanted to use it, and it's not super long, but it is also good to just have this near your battery anyway. So this puts it really close to the battery. And if you have a choice between having it near your battery and near your 120 volt, you definitely want it near your battery. The 120 volt is much more efficient at transferring because it's higher voltage. So before I permanently attach this, I'm probably going to attach the cables to the inverter and just double check that I can run them to where they need to be run. But I'll break in every once in a while and give an update to my progress. Okay, I wanted to record a little update here. So I have the inverter screwed on with six screws. So I have two in the keyholes and then one on the very end to keep it from sliding. So that seems very, very secure now. I have the positive and negative cables hooked up to the positive and negative bus bars on the other side of here. So I still need to torque these down. So I ran the negative cable over the top and I'm using one of these zip ties with a little screw hole on it to hold that down. Then I have the positive coming through here. I drilled a, I think it's a 32 millimeter hole. Maybe it's a 35. This is the whole size you would typically use for a hinge in cabinetry, whatever size that is. And I put a little bit of split loom there with a zip tie to kind of hold it so it doesn't wobble. And I connected that here. So you may notice I don't have a fuse on here, but this is fused here. So here I have a 200 amp class T fuse. So we have the battery connecting here through the 200 amp fuse. That's going through the switch, going through the bus bar. This is rated for 350 amps. This is rated for 300 amps. And then that's going to the terminal. So you want the fuse to be the weakest link in the system. So the fuse is the weakest link from the battery to the inverter. Had I used the cable that came with it, I would have had to put a second fuse in because that cable is rated lower than this one knot cable. But I'm not going into the ins and outs of fusing with this video. You'll need to research that on your own. So this is almost ready. I do still need to hook the ground up here. Now I moved the plug for the inverter. It was over there. I moved it over here so I should be able to plug that in. And I also have one of these BT2 Bluetooth monitors I'm going to plug in and the remote setup. So I still have a little bit to do, but right now if I flip the switch, this probably would turn on. Okay, so next I need to hook up the ground. And for this 2000 watt inverter, the manual recommends 12 gauge wire. Now I unfortunately don't have any green 12 gauge. I have red and blue, and this blue is a silicon wire. 
So the type of wiring you typically want to use would be like a marine wire or a primary wire. So I went with the blue. I have some green shrink tubing. I'm going to try and put this on here. This is almost the same diameter, but I'll probably try and put a little bit of that on each end. And I may later swap this out for a proper green wire, but this should work for now. Okay, so I have the ground connected up. I've also torqued these two terminals to 16 Newton meters. And here I have the ground wire connected up to the negative terminal bus, and this is connected to the chassis ground of the camper. So I could turn this on and start using it now, but first I'm going to connect up the remote. And I also have the BT2 Bluetooth module. That will allow it to connect to the Rangi 1 core. So I'm going to get those plugged in, and then we should be able to test it out pretty soon. Okay, I think I have everything hooked up now. I've got the Bluetooth mounted here. I've plugged in the remote. I'm not sure where I'm going to put this yet, so I just have it loose. So I'll turn this on. So I have this battery disconnect. This is for running my solar, and this is solar plus RV. So almost everything's hooked up to this except for the solar. So this is where the inverter is set up. So I'll turn to that. So now the inverter should have power and everything else. So I'm not seeing power on the Bluetooth. So let's try the remote switch. That says on, it's flashing. And now Bluetooth is on. So now I'll get this set up on the Renogy One core. So I'm going to go to devices. I'll say add device, it's scanning. It sees the inverter, we'll hit add. It says added successfully, I'll hit got it. And here we see the inverter. So it says DC input volts is 13.4, Hertz is 60, temperature is 60.8. So now on the main screen, we can see our solar and we can see the inverter. So let me plug something in and see if we get power. So before I do that, I'm going to look at the shunt here and see how many watts we're pulling. So we're currently using 0 0.01 watts because solar is bringing a little bit in right now. It's bringing in 13 watts or 18 watts. Okay, so we have the inverter here and on my camper, the inverter outlet is wired right here. So I'm going to plug in this cordless vac battery. It has a charger. This is, I can't read it, it's too dark, but we'll see what it takes. Okay, so that's flashing. So it means it's charging. Let's take a look here. And it looks like we're currently drawing 40 watts from the inverter. So if we go to the detail mode, you can see it says 2%. So we're using 2% of our 2000 watt capacity. So I have 100 watts of solar on here right now, but the most I've gotten is maybe 50 to 60, 70 watts of solar in. I'm going to be upgrading that at some point. So I do want to be mindful of how much power I pull through the inverter as I don't want to run the batteries down. So let me unplug it here. Let's go to detail mode. Let me unplug it. and it hasn't updated. There we go, it updated and now it says zero. So I don't know if this is actually pulling zero. I'll have to do some more experimenting, but typically you want to turn the inverter off if you're not using it. Although right now I do want to charge this battery, so I will plug it in. So that's the Renogy 2000 watt inverter with power saving. Now this camper came with a 1000 watt inverter and truth be told, we never used it. But since I've upgraded the batteries, I wanted to have a more powerful inverter. With a 2000 watt inverter like this, I can run my electric kettle Typically that will run between four to seven minutes to boil water, and this thing could easily handle that. And on a sunny day, I should be able to recover that power with solar. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.